All right, so you're welcome again to this session um, and um, we're going to be looking into something that appears to be deep. You know, however, I believe that you have the wisdom of God to interpret these things. I would also try within my power to kind of simplify it so that um, it doesn't really go over your head. However, it's important that you also be on top of things, you know, in order to be able to get things as it were. Now, even beyond coaching, one of the things that I'll be sharing with you, you will begin to find out is the reason why you're where you are today. And the reason why you have not made that step and probably the wisdom that you require to make that step in purpose so that you don't keep going around life in circles and cycles. Okay? Now, I've got a couple of things written down here. This is just to guide my thoughts so that I can still be able to, um, within the limited time that I have, still share that which I believe will be sufficient for you never, in order to make certain known decisions. Now, one of the objectives of this that I strongly believe is that at the end of this session, you will have a lot of questions. You will also have answers. And then it begins to open your mind to see things the way they are beyond all the razzmatazz and the shallow thinking uh, many of us have lived most of our lives, you know, <clears throat> entertaining. So let's get it started. Today we're looking at the power to be. And this is the most important question of everybody's, everybody's life, the power to be. You need to understand that being is not a wish. You, it requires certain powers. Power is the ability to make things happen. Okay, ability to work, ability to do, ability to have that power. And so in order to be, you need power. What kind of power? What state of power? What stage of power? Now, this is where we're going to be breaking it down. You know, um, the Greek has different words that demonstrate power in its sense. So we have ishkush, we have energia, we have um Kratos, and there's there's one other one. We have Ischus, we have Energia, we have Kratos. I think I remember um, Dunamis. Dunamis. Okay. Now, you need to understand that different powers are required for different things. So there's the power that has to do with capacity. So when I say a 60 watt bulb, it means the capacity of the brightness of that bulb is 60 watt. It can't go beyond that. So it has power, but that power is limited. When we talk about Kratos, Kratos is operational power. It's talked about capabilities, ability to do things and to make things happen. Energy, um, it's more of energy by potential, the potential difference. This person has potential to make things, you know, uh, make things happen. And so you need to understand that when we're talking about power to be, it might be across these different kinds of power. Now, the very first thing you need to understand about the power to be is what I call the seed. Everyone starts with a seed or everyone is given a seed. Now, we need to understand that when we all came to this world, to this earth, or when you give your life to Christ, you start off as a seed. It means that you have all it takes to make the best out of your life, but it is not at a usable stage at that time. What that means is that you need to grow, mature, build, get into processes, become, experience difficulties and challenges in order to squeeze the precious oil out of you so a lot of people are still in the stage of the seed where they they tell them they've got a lot of potentials they believe that they have a calling for upon their lives they have that sense of what god is calling them into but they are currently not living it and they don't even know how to activate initiate execute whatever the case is so that point of C is the first point that you must not stay for long. There are too many people who have stayed long in the place of the seed and have glorified the stage of the seed without realizing that that's the lowest stage. Now, there are certain decisions you need to make with the seed. The decision is, are you going to stay a seed? 
because you are afraid you don't know what's going to happen after or are you going to move to know what happens beyond being a seed now many of the times we don't know what is beyond a seed as a seed you don't know tomorrow you might have an inclination an idea a thought a vision but you don't know tomorrow because there are too many variables that determine what tomorrow looks like that you're not private to so when you understand the face of the seed and then you make the choice to know what is beyond the seed is a step of courage is a step of surrender and that process is called dying you will lose a lot of things you'll be confused you'll be in darkness you don't know what the next step is going to be like that is the stage of dying you need to die to self you need to die to your ambition you need to die to your experiences and exposure you need to die to your genealogy to your hereditary the, the your mentality the, the way you have been programmed to, to live your life you need to die to those things and dying is not fantasy you don't just think it as a nice thing to do it's a horrific experience you will lose things you will feel pain you will have uncertainty even jesus at the time of his death cried out to God, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. He said, my God, my God, I don't feel your presence. I don't feel your hand. I don't feel like you're with me. Why do I feel forsaken? That is the process of dying. And you will go through that. The earlier you go through that, the quicker for you. Now, here's the thing again. Some people don't manage dying well because they don't have all it takes to die. They start the process of dying, but they do not cross over for fear, whatever reason. So when the process of dying is truncated, you begin to decompose. That means the energy of life that the seed carries cannot be translated to the next phase. And so you lose out completely. There are many people whose life have been snuffed out for whatever reason. Okay, so that is the second stage of dying. The third state is now the change of state. This is when you are welcomed into a new life. You need to now begin to re-educate yourself. Okay, because you are no longer just a seed now. You have died and then you are now a growing seed. A new life, a new economy, a new status now you are growing you must understand that that change of state must happen you must move from ideation to execution you must move from potential to pragmatics you must move your having visions in your head to living a life of vision you must make that cross you must make that transition and not many people actually believe to make that transition People keep going back and forth, dangling in that dying state, not fully embracing the nothingness, the uncertainty, the darkness, the abyss, you know, and, and all of that leap of faith that it requires. I'll give you an example. Some people, in order to die, the seed form of their life has been nine to five job. And in order to die, they needed to actually quit their job, understand what it means to have nothing, and to not know where the next meal is coming from. But now start a business, start an enterprise, start something else and then begin to grow. That's dying. Some people dying for them is leaving a country they spend all of their lives in and they're moving to a new total place that they don't know anything about. That's dying. I'm letting you understand that dying can come in different ways depending on what is required of you. But dying is a sacrifice. Dying is a leap of faith. When you know what you're supposed to do, and you know that there's something between that decision, that courage, that faith, that, that risk to just go all in, knowing, following the promptings within you that you know to be true, that is dying. So when you completely die, you're going to change your state and then you begin to re-educate yourself, understand the new culture understand a new language, 
begin the new regimen. Okay, now you're reading your Bible. Now you're fellowshipping with God. You're studying the right content. You're not consuming the wrong things on social media anymore. And then you begin a stage of growth. Now, there are many people who do not grow well because they are still peeping into the grave, even when they're in a new life. So these are the people who are still looking into Egypt when they're on the way to the promised land. They're still using what you used to know, the kind of friends you used to keep, the kind of places you used to live. They are still influencing your thoughts, actions, and decisions. That means that you are still looking at dead places. And so your growth will not go well. You would have stunted growth. You would, you would not really grow at the way, the rate, and the pace that you're actually supposed to grow. So it's very important. When you make that transition, go all in, focus, do everything it requires for you to begin to grow as quickly as possible in order to make sure that you do not become even a casualty of the promised land. It's very important that you know that. So, you have to grow into the right state. Now, you can grow into a wrong state. Now, when you grow into a wrong state, that is what is called a disease or an illness or a sickness or a cancer. You are growing out of purpose. So you, can, you can become wealthy out of purpose. You can become um, successful out of purpose. That is growing in sickness, growing in illness, growing in the wrong way. Because that is not exactly what is your design. And there are many people who probably when they were in school, at the point where they felt that certainty and clarity of what God was calling them into. But when they look at their lives now, they're living nothing like that. Okay, some people believe they had a ministry, God calling, they were having revelations and, and encounters with God. But now there's nothing to show forth for it. That is a sign that you are growing in the wrong state. And it's important for you to learn to retrace your step. Go back to those moments and try to seek those instructions that would align you, you know, <clears throat> in the right path and in the right way. Now, when you begin to grow in the right place, that is when the politics and the realities of the new face begins to come to you. And this is where you begin to realize that you need to create for yourself a space. You need to make a name for yourself. There must be something you must be known for. Services, value, um, leadership, effectiveness, distribution, whatever it is, there must be something you do that gives expression to your purpose. That becomes your place. But that place will not just be given to you on a platter of gold. You've got to contend for it. Okay, it's just like going to the promised land. I would always use that analogy. There are already people living there. You have to contend for that land. Why? Because you know that that land has been given to you. Now, one of the core things you need to understand about this, your place, is going to be your purpose. Once you understand what purpose means to you, or what purpose has been revealed to you as, then you need to fight for it. It's like faith. You've got to fight for that faith. It's called fighting the good fight of faith. There are certain things that will come to rob you off, certain things that will come to contend with you. You have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, okay? This is when you need to understand core spirituality and what are the things that fuel you spiritually, financially, politically, and every, um, every area of your life. The next phase is the face of the enemy. And I need to really stop here and mention something. The enemy a lot of people have called the enemy is not really an enemy. It's a distraction. There is a difference between a distraction and an enemy. A distraction causes you to lose vision. An enemy causes you to lose purpose. So there are two different things. And also, for a matter of fact, you do not know an enemy until you first know your purpose. It is when purpose is known that you can know your enemy. Because in, the enemy is that person that will now contend with your purpose to make sure that that purpose does not see the light of day. Okay? So purpose must be clearly known. This phase of your life, what is the most important thing? Is the most important thing for you marriage at this point? Is the most important thing amassing of wealth? 
is the most important thing praying for the nations is the most important thing gaining skills and expertise you need to know what your purpose is per season per time there is no one full grand purpose i believe purpose is ceased now and every purpose comes with instruction the moment you receive an instruction from your creator who has the owner's manner then Purpose is giving obedience and expression to those instructions and making sure that you do not lose focus along that path. Now, that is purpose for you. And so the enemy comes after your purpose is known. Then I also mentioned this, that you cannot win or defeat an enemy when you are thinking as a victim. If you have victim mentality, you cannot defeat the enemy of purpose. The best thing you would do is you would you would agree with it. It will bring a negotiation for you that will seem nice. So you need to understand that the only way to defeat the enemy is to be a victor. Victor means that you have the mindset of a victor, not the mindset of a victim. So a victim complains. I'll give an example in the scripture. Everything the Israelites did on their way to the promised land was victim mentality. They would always complain. They would always haggle. You know, they're always looking back at Egypt, always saying Egypt was better. They were, they did not like the uncertainty. Any quick thing, they are grumbling, murmuring. That's victim mentality. A victim mentality, on the other hand, is you know what is at stake. You know what needs to be done. And you are willing to do everything in your power to get it done. You see a Goliath, you don't run back. You see a Goliath, you advance towards it. And this is where every part of the step of the way has, has been done. Because if you really went through the process, you will know your armor, you will know your, your, your weapon of war, you will know what has worked for you. You will have engaged with your lion and the bear, you know, and you would have been standing as a mighty person. You cannot afford to live life on mediocre terms. You cannot afford to live life as a victim. You cannot continue to complain about things. Most people who complain about things, if you notice, they have the consumer mentality. There is nothing they are making. There is nothing they are creating. There is no impact they are giving the world. They are only waiting for everything to be done. And as a matter of fact, um, those who have the victim mentality, many of the times, are those who are waiting for a Messiah. Constantly in the state of waiting for a Messiah. Forgetting that now you have become sons of God. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. What more do you need? If people are looking for a Messiah, show them the Messiah. Who is the Messiah? You are the Messiah. How do you become the Messiah? By tapping into your purpose, knowing what God wants you to do per season, per time, and giving full focus, dedication, and attention to it in such a way that you master it and you become the best at it. So in this phase and in this season, it's very important for you to hark into these words. You cannot continue to live life expecting things to be done for you. Whatever is your need, create it. Find a way. You need money. Don't expect the government will pay you. Don't expect someone will pay you. Ask yourself, how can I create money? Ask yourself, what can I do to make money? This has happened to me many, many times. When you know your skills, the areas of your calling, if you need a million naira, there is something you can do that can bring that money to you. But there are many people who spend time praying and going to mountains, hoping that a Ghana must go drops to them. That is mediocre mentality. That is consumer mentality. That is victim mentality. And those kind of people would never share anything great with God. God is giving measures, unctions, anointing, glories, virtues to people in these last days. And these are the people who will stand with boldness because they know within their heart even though they might not see how things will become possible, they know it, can, it will be possible because of the resolve they have, the skill they have. They, they, they've given attention wholly and fully to the things of God. 
this is how to get right with life. No matter what it is you believe is your calling, if you believe that greatness is in your destiny, I'm telling you now, you're probably wasting time doing nothing, hoping for things to change when you are the one to make the change. God has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. God has given you the resources and the power. You just have to tap into it. And if you're a victim, you will not even see it happen. It's until you have that victor's mentality, a creator man. That is when you begin to say, how can I make things happen? And when you begin to meditate on that stance long enough, then things will begin to happen to you. Like I mentioned at the beginning, the core of this session is to allow you to open you into a lot of questions, to question yourself and to really understand why you're where you are and also to give you answers for the reason why you have wasted time and destiny moments waiting for things that will never come things that will never happen until you make the choice until you take the step until you make things happen if you are poor today is not god's fault it's your fault if you don't have quality relationship in your life today it's not god's fault it's your fault because everything you need every level of money you need is not in heaven is on this earth the quality relationship you need is not in heaven, is on this earth. The business ideas you need is not in heaven, is on this earth. Why are you not maximizing things? The reason is simple. You're looking at it the wrong way. You have been taught that you need to wait for a Messiah. You, God is coming. Jesus is coming. The second coming of Christ is coming, yes. But it's not coming to save you. It's coming to pick victors and people who have triumphed. And so... Whether you be in heaven or in hell, it's going to be your making. If you're always waiting for things to happen, I'm sorry, you already know where you're going. But if you are part of those who would seek out and create things, that is what it means to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, and to exercise dominion. And so I really pray that you'd have a lot of questions, that the Holy Spirit will begin to open a lot of things in your heart for you to understand why you're where you are, and what you should do quickly. For a lot of you, the, the scarcity mentality has been the reason why you're where you are. There are certain things you can't invest in. There are certain things you can't pay for. You can't spend time or commit resources into. You would stay the same way and years will continue to pass over you until you make the choice, until you make things happen. Whether it's for your financial goals, spiritual goals, political goals, career goals, whatever it starts by understanding these things what is your seed have you died are you growing in the right state or you are growing in the wrong state do you even understand what purpose is are you living a life in obedience to purpose do you know who the enemy is do you know the tactics the skills the schemes of the enemy do you have what it takes to defeat the enemy these are some of the things you need to internalize within you and like I've said, I'm more than happy to help you through some of these processes. But you need to understand that these things will not come easy. And these things will not come cheap, by the way. Because there's a lot, you have, you, have, you have lived your life in the wrong program for too long. It will not just change in a day. You have to work it out. Work out your salvation with fear and trend. All right? So that's just what I would love to share with you today. This is the power to be. This is not just a message, it is spirit. And so you need to engage with the spirit of this world. If you'd have to listen to this multiple times, please do. Your destiny is at stake and you really need to catch on to this. All right then, so I'm going to be ending here and I really do hope if you've got questions, please send me your questions and I'll be more than happy um, to respond and to guide you. Well, God bless you and hopefully we'll see on the other side.